Okay, welcome to the great American epic, where we discuss The Walking Dead. Another episode of Dead City has been released, and though my anchor in these talks is the already completed 11-season original series, there is some iconography in this most recent episode that is so perfect and compelling and helpful that I see an opportunity I do not want to miss in talking about it. To start, we have to go back to the finale of season eight, which, to my mind, is the spiritual climax of the epic. And remember the way that Negan is finally defeated by Rick. He's slit in the throat with a piece of glass. See, the final battle has been staged in a field under stained glass paintings that hang from a tree one vertical to represent Rick, one horizontal to represent Negan. Season eight opened with shots of Rick's face glimmering with light, beaming through the prism of these stained glass artworks. The poetics of the whole thing are tremendous. Just the word we use to describe the art, quote, stained glass, is multivalent in this context. The staining of glass is literally something that harkens back to the sacred, the sun seen as a figure for metaphysical revelations, and painted glass seen as human divination of the beauty of ethereal truth. But our word stained, ironically, carries the connotation of sin, which both the hero and the antagonist, Rick and Negan, at this point are marked by. That is why it's so moving for Rick to experience the relief of having shown mercy to Negan. Why it's both such an epiphany and such a catharsis for him. But this is a theme that would take much more time to spell out, For now, let us just remember that Negan is put a stop to. He is halted. His tyranny is finally brought to an end by a broken piece of stained glass. We can't help but note that stained glass is an artifact of the cathedral, particularly the medieval Gothic cathedral, which became the setting of the Gothic genre of literature as it emerged in the Enlightenment, which reinterpreted the religious age as a dark one. Even as we note that our stained glass in proper American form is not hanging in a cathedral, but rather evocatively from a tree and out on an open landscape in a genre of the Gothic that is distinctly American, namely the Southern. Glass has a significant history with Negan, is a critical piece of iconography in the epic. So when I saw here in this most recent episode of Dead City that Negan's way of intimidating the prodigious enemy threatening him, Maggie, and their group was to use in dramatic, literally in-your-face form, glass I was struck by the poetics of it. This is the kind of thing that happens all over The Walking Dead. It's one of the reasons why it deserves being called not only an epic, but also an epic poem. Negan deliberately performs a role he knows well, the outrageous intimidator, in this new episode by busting plate glass windows with the head of a living murderer. We can talk about that whole amazing scene another time. There are too many dimensions of everything in The Walking Dead to compass any of them all at once. I just want to note here how, in the way this episode was directed, there's a scene shortly after Negan has performed his characteristic Hobbesian maneuver 
in which he sits and has to pick what else but glass shards from his hands. It cost him something to pull off his stunt this time. He's old, he's both wiser and more rusty. And we recall, I don't know if he recalls, but we recall how it was a shard of glass that ended his reign of terror and set him on a course towards some kind of rehabilitation thanks to Rick's epiphanic mercy, which seemed to pass through Rick as though like light passing through stained glass. It's very clear that Negan is not glad to have had to perform in his old way. He seems shrunken, paradoxically, a smaller man, despite having done the intimidating routine. It was necessary to his mind, but it was joyless too, disheartening. Why, he might ask himself, is this albatross his unique epic ability? He was wounded to have done it, physically, perhaps spiritually. It's amusing on an entertainment comedic level to see Negan behave in these outrageous ways, obviously. But we are meant ultimately to see the pathos of it as well. We are to feel sorry for Negan that this is his lot, this is his talent, and that glass, stained, is echoing in his life now, not with iridescent light from the sun, but with the blood of his own hands. I bring all this up, really, not to talk about Negan's character. That's a far too complex subject, and anyway, I have no idea how the plot in Dead City is going to play out. I do take it as a positive sign, however, that this iconography is still all intact, that the show designers would include this. It's the same hallmark poetics that are one reason why The Walking Dead is the great American epic. Here, so much is spoken through nothing more than the poetics of glass appearing at just the right moments in a certain character's arc to guide our interpretation, to clue us into the spiritual resonances of the show, to unify and complicate the epic. And it even works with our change in American settings, from the American Southern Gothic of The Walking Dead to New York City and Dead City. During the progressive era in the 19th century, it was, after all, glass architecture in places like Manhattan that displaced the cathedrals of older times. Skyscrapers and other feats of modern architecture seemed to many thinking people like modern, secular incarnations of grandeur and sublimity that was once reserved for religious spaces. Sleek, translucent glass replacing stained cathedral glass was the architectural equivalent of secular humanism replacing pre-modern faiths. The question then, as now in Dead City, is can anything like the sacred prevail, find life, in a space in which the metaphysical is eschewed and instead human achievement is idolized. All of this carefully written into one scene, made just so Negan's reprise of a role he once played unselfconsciously, now more out of necessity, wishing he did not have to, happens amidst glass prominently, the glass of a secular city as opposed to that of a religious South. I have said more than I intended to. All I critically wanted to point out was how the use of glass in this most recent episode of Dead City is an echo of the use of glass in the spiritual climax of The Walking Dead when Negan was taken down by a shard of sacred glass in an act of unexpected mercy to the horror of Maggie, whom Negan is now getting his hands dirty with glass in order to help. <laughs>